I am Kuching, Yuhun of the Liga Chising. And this is Talon Striker from the Nexus Workshop. We're here to bring you the first in a series called Genshin Impact and D&D. I'm sure you're wondering, what is Genshin Impact and D&D? Well... Ron, enough procrastinating! Let's go! Time is against us. Alright, without further ado, welcome to Kaching and D&D! Heart is set on something. You get closer to your goal with each passing day. We have a few goals for this build. Our first one being fancy blade work, because she's a master of the blade. Teleportation, because how else is she going to travel all around Tevat? And then lightning abilities for that extra sting. But first, we have to start with Kaching's race. Despite the hair on her head making her look like a cat girl, she is indeed a human. A variant human, to be precise. As a human variant, we get to pick one language of our choosing, which in this case, we'll pick Elvish. We get to bump up our two stats by one. In this case, we'll take Dexterity and Intelligence. We get a skill proficiency of our choice. In this case, we'll take Survival, because Kaching is known for being able to survive in the wild by herself with nothing but a hair and then we'll take the Feet Piercer, because that'll let us increase our dexterity again by one, as well as once per turn, when we hit a creature with an attack that deals piercing damage, we can reroll one of the attacks, die, uh, but we have to use the new one. But we also, whenever we score a critical hit that deals piercing damage to a creature, we can reroll one additional damage die when determining the extra piercing damage for that target. On to the stats. We'll be using standard array just to keep things nice and simple. Strength will be an 8 because Kaching uses more fina finesse than brute strength. Dexterity is our main stat and is at a 15. She knows her way around a hairpin and a sword. Constitution is nice solid 12. She likes her golden shrimp balls after all. Intelligence is a 13 but it'll be bumped up to a 14 with our intelligence bonus from Varian. Wisdom is a nice 14 because she has a lot of field experience thanks to her job and hobbies. And then Charisma is a 10 due to the fact that she might be good at her job, but she really isn't good with communication. Moving on to Kaching's description, she'll be a guild artisan slash merchant. The reason for this is, as the Yuhung of the Liwei Qixing means that she's one of the seven merchants and business leaders who govern Liwei. Because of the previous skills we picked, she gets access to the insight and persuasion skills. The Yuhung is in charge of land, livelihood management, construction, and real estate, which means she knows her way around some mason tools. And we'll give her Dwarver seeing as how they are natural builders, and it makes sense for her. As for the personal characteristics, uh, her personality traits are, I believe that anything worth doing is worth doing right. I can't help it. I'm a perfectionist. I'm rude to people who lack my commitment to hard work and fair play. Her ideals are community, it is the duty of all civilized people to strengthen the bonds of the community and the security of the civilization. Bonds, my homeland where I learned my trade and grew up is the most important place in the world to me. And then flaws are, I believe that mortals should work harder for themselves and not leave everything up to the gods. In order to get our goals, the only real choice we have for our class is Ranger. Level 1, we get Perception, Investigation, and Athletics as our proficiency skills. Thanks to Tasha's, we'll get the replacement features for the rest of the class, which means we'll get Favored Foe and Deft Explorer. Favored Foe makes it so that way when we hit a creature with an attack, we can mark an enemy and do an extra die of damage from 1d4 to 1d8, depending on our level. This requires us to use concentration like that of a spell, and you can use it up to a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. So think of it as like a mini's hunting mark. Um, Deft Explorer gives us different things at certain levels. At level 1 we get Canny, which lets us double the proficiency bonus of any one of the skills that we picked before. In this case we'll pick Perception to make us better at seeing things, and then plus we get two more languages and we'll pick Sylvan and Draconic because those are like similar to what the Adepti 
would speak. At level 2 we get our fighting style, which in this case will be dueling. Dueling lets us add 2 extra damage to a damage roll when Kuching attacks with a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapon is in the other hand. We also get access to spell casting. Here we'll pick up Detect Magic and Hunter's Mark. Detect Magic lets us see the presence of magic within 30 feet of us, this acts like our elemental sight from Genshin. And Hunter's Mark lets us choose a creature within range to mark. When marked, that creature takes an extra d6 of damage based on the weapon damage type, plus we get advantage on any perception or survival checks we make to find said creature. If the creature drops to zero, we can move that mark to a new creature. At level 3 we get our subclass, which will be Horizon Walker. With this subclass we get Detect Portal. This lets us use an action to detect the closest planar portal within one mile of us. We can only use it once every short or long rest, but this lets us find the nearest ley line. Uh, planar Warrior lets us draw energy to infuse our attacks. As a bonus action, we can choose a creature, and the next time we would hit them with a weapon attack, all damage becomes force damage, plus they take an extra d8 of force damage. And the damage increases to 2d8 at level 11. Uh, we also get more spells thanks to Primal Awareness and Horizon Walker. We get Speak with Animals from Primal Awareness and Protection from Good and Evil from Horizon Walker. Speak with Animals, as it sounds, lets us communicate with animals. Protection from Good and Evil uh, wards a willing creature from aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. This protection means that those listed creatures have disadvantage on attack rolls against the willing creature, and that creature can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. And if they were, when we use the spell, then that creature gets advantage on saving throws to pass against those effects. We'll also pick up Zephyr Strike. This lets us move without provoking opportunity attacks. And once before the end of the spell, we can get advantage on one at weapon attack uh, that deals an extra D8 of force damage to a creature. Whether we hit or miss, our walking speed will increase by 30 feet until the end of that turn. At level 4, we get an ability score improvement. We'll take the athlete feat, which will increase our dexterity by 1, making it an 18. It also lets us stand up for 5 feet of movement when we are prone, makes it so that our climbing speed doesn't cost extra movement, and our running long jump and high jump can be done with moving 5 feet rather than 10 feet. You have to be athletic if you want to get around leeway, you know? At level 5 we get extra attack. From now on, we can attack twice instead of once when we take the attack action. We also get access to second level spells. From Horizon Walker, we get Misty Step that lets us teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space that we can see. We finally have Kuching's teleportation. From Primal Awareness, we get Beast Sense. This lets us touch a willing beast and let us use its senses to see and hear. We also get to pick up Magic Weapon, which lets us touch a non-magical weapon and give it a plus one to attack and damage controls. At level 6, we get Roving. Our walking speed increases by 5 feet, and climbing speed and swimming speed equals our walking speed. And Canny does 1d6 damage instead of 1d4. At level 7, we get Ethereal Step. We can cast Etherealness for free, but the spell ends at the end of the current turn, and we can only use it once, a short rest or long rest. We also pick up the spell Find Traps. We can use this to sense the presence of any traps within range of the spell. At level 8, we get an ability score improvement. Here we'll increase our dexterity by 2 to make our dexterity 20, maxing it out. We also get Land Stride. This means you can move through non-magical difficult terrain without costing us any extra movement or taking damage. Plus, we get advantage on saving throws against plants made magically or manipulated. At level 9, we get access to third level spells. From Horizon Walker we get haste. With haste we can choose a willing creature that we can see. Until the spell ends the target speed is doubled, it gains plus two to its armor class and has advantage on deck saves and it gains an extra action. When the spell ends the target can't move or take actions until its next turn. Primal Awareness gives us speak with plants. This lets us speak with plants, turn plants to regular terrain, uh, into difficult terrain, or vice versa, 
and we can talk to plant creatures. We also pick up elemental weapons. This lets us imbue a non-magical weapon with an element, in this case, lightning. And the weapon gains a plus one to attack and damage rolls and deals an extra 1d4 of the chosen damage type, which this now gives us the lightning imbued attacks that Kaching has. At level 10, we get Tyrant. As an action, we can gain a number of temporary hit points, 1d8 plus our wisdom mod. We can use this a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus per long rest. And if we have a level of exhaustion, when we take a short rest, we can decrease it by 1. Nature's Veil lets us magically turn invisible until the start of our next turn, and we can only use that a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus per long rest as well. At level 11, we get Distance Strike. When we take the attack action, we can teleport up to 10 feet to an unoccupied space before each attack. If we attack two different creatures with this attack action, we can make an additional attack against a third creature. We also pick up the spell Conjure Animals. This lets us summon face spirits to take the form of beasts and appear in an unoccupied space that we can see within range. Each beast is considered fey and dis disappears when it drops to zero hit points or when the spell ends. We can summon one, two, four, or eight beasts depending on their challenge rate. At level 12, we get an ability score improvement. Here we'll take the defensive duelist feat. When we are wielding a finesse weapon and another creature hits us with a melee attack, we can use our reaction to add our proficiency bonus to our armor class to potentially make that attack to miss. At level 13, we get level 4 spells. From Horizon Walker, we get Banishment. With this spell, we can attempt to send a creature we see within range to another plane of existence. The target must succeed a Charisma saving throw or be banished. If the target is native to the current plane we're on, the target goes to a harmless step plane. The target remains there until the spell ends and reappears in the same spot it left. If it's not native, then it goes to its home plane of existence and doesn't return if a minute has passed without the spell ending. Primal Awareness gives us Locate Creature. We describe or name a creature familiar to us. We can sense the direction of the creature's location as long as it's within a thousand feet. We can also pick up the spell Conjure Woodland Deans. Similar to Conjure Animals, we summon face spirits to appear in an unoccupied space that we can see within range. We can summon one, two, four, or eight beings depending on the challenge rating. Each creature disappears when its HP drops to zero or the spell ends. Summoning Adepti to help us isn't bad every once in a while. At level 14, we get Vanish. We can use the hide action as a bonus action, and we can't be tracked by magical means unless we choose to leave a trail. And Favored Foe also does 1d8 damage instead of 1d6 now. At level 15, we get Spectral Defense. When we take damage from an attack, we can use our reaction to give ourselves resistance to all damage of that attack's damage this turn. If we time our attacks correctly, we can dodge most damage. We also pick up the spell Guardian of Nature. A nature spirit answers our call and transforms us. We can assume either a primal beast or great tree form. Primal beast increases our walking speed by 10 feet, give us dark vision up to 120 feet, make strength based attacks with advantage, and have melee weapon attacks deal an extra 1d6 force damage. Great tree gives us 10 temporary HP, let us make con saves with advantage, make dex and wisdom based attacks have advantage, and while we are on the ground, make 15 feet around us difficult terrain for enemies. At level 16, we get an ability score improvement. Here, we'll increase our wisdom by 2 to make our wisdom a total of 16. We'll need wisdom for the next level. At level 17, we get level 5 spells. From Horizon Walker, we get Teleportation Circle. As we cast the spell, we draw a 10-foot circle on the ground with Sitgrove. We can then open a portal to any other teleportation circle that we know until the end of our next turn. At the end, the circle we drew disappears. Primal Awareness gives us Commune with Nature. We briefly become one with the nature and gain knowledge of the surrounding territory. We instantly gain knowledge of three subjects. Terrain and bodies of water, prevalent plants, minerals, animals, or peoples, powerful celestials, fey, fiends, elementals, or undead, influence from other planes of existence, and last but not least, buildings. The ultimate spell for the Yuhun. And we pick up Kaching's elemental burst, Steel Wing Strike. We flourish a weapon and then vanish. We choose up the five creatures we see within range and make a melee spell attack against each. On hit, a target takes 6d10 force damage 
and at the end we teleport to an unoccupied space we can see within 5 feet of a target that we hit or missed. At level 18 we get Feral Sense. When we attack a creature that we can't see, we don't have disadvantage on attacks against it. Plus we also are aware of the location of any invisible creature within 30 feet of us provided we aren't blinded or deafened. At level 19 we get an ability score improvement. Here we'll increase our wisdom by 2 to make our wisdom 18, making our elemental burst easier to hit. We'll also pick up the spell Wrath of Nature. We call out to the spirits of nature to help fight against our enemies. We choose a point we can see within range and the spirits cause trees, rocks, and grass to animate. Grass becomes difficult to rain for enemies, trees slash at enemies, roots and vines grabs at enemies to restrain them, and rocks fling themselves at enemies to damage them. Together with the Adepti, we can stop any foe. And finally, at level 20, we get Foe Slayer. Once on each of our turns, we can add our Wisdom modifier to attack or damage rolls of an attack we make to an enemy. It's an amazing ability, trust me. So that's it for the build for Kutchin. The pros of this build is that she has great single target and multi-target damage. Good mobility, and she has great ability centered around nature. The cons, however, are that she has a lot of concentration based spells, really mediocre saving throws besides decks, and has a low constitution so you might drop spells after taking a hit. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to finish today's commission, and I'll see you all next time when we remember the taste of all Samantha's wine in Genshin Impact in D&D.